Yo, what's up, you guys? I'm going to tell my story by tomorrow or Sunday. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope everybody's taking care of business. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <sighs> On YouTube, but not fully, though. I'm just be uploading videos. You know? But I'm going to try to do some premieres, you know, maybe next week or whenever I can and stuff like that. Hope everybody's having a safe, safe weekend. Please, please have a safe, safe, safe weekend. I'm doing good. And everything is going good, you know, in my relationship. And I'm feeling better. You know what I'm saying? So, if anybody wants to reach out to me, anybody wants to call me for prayers, uh, just email me and I will give my tax, uh, text app number. You can call me and we can, you can pray for me and stuff like that. Cause, and thank y'all, everybody, for for commenting on my previous video. So, I'm going to tell y'all exactly what happened. Okay. I went to Oklahoma City. It was like, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, was it, it was like two or three weeks ago. And so I think it was the 17, 18, 19, 20, something like that. Okay. When I arrived to Oklahoma City, I thought everything was going to be okay. Uh, I went to stay with my sister until me and Miss Passion got everything sorted out with her situation and everything like that. So, I didn't want to be over my sister's house because my sister's house is too small and I didn't have a bed to sleep in but an air mattress, so. So, I went over to my old mentor's house, you know, and then I thought that she was gonna help me get a room and everything. But, however, I was feeling homesick, you know, because Tennessee is my home, and I was wanting to come back and everything. And I've been wanting to come back even before I went to Oklahoma two or three weeks ago, you know what I'm saying? So, so I stayed over at my sister's house for a week because she kicked me out. She kicked me out and said something about she thought I was using her or something like that. Uh, but I wouldn't. You know, I don't do stuff like that. I'm a good person. And so, uh, after that, I went to a homeless shelter, a city rescue mission homeless shelter. The out town, uh, I stayed there for like three or four nights. You know, and they treated the homeless shelter literally like a low-level jail, which meaning you couldn't go nowhere unless it got approved. It was worse than the group home. At least a group home, you can go places, just tell them, and you can walk around places and stuff like that. You can do it if you want to. You can stay in your room. If you want to watch TV, be on your phone, do what you want to, have your freedom. And they were so rude to the clients, you know, the homeless people that were there. They were so rude. And my shoe, my $80 per shoes got stolen. So I'm going to show y'all what shoes I'm wearing right now. Hold on. These are the shoes that I'm wearing right now. See? These are freaking messed up shoes. I got these shoes. Trade these shoes from a homeless person. I gave the homeless person my um, Echo flip flops. 
for these shoes because somebody stole my $80 pair of shoes at the city risk of mission. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. And also, um, that's not the story. Okay, I stayed at the city rescue mission for like two or three days. And things weren't working out. I couldn't go nowhere unless it got approved and stuff like that. And you had to be there at that shelter all day. So it didn't work out with that shelter downtown. Okay, see. And then, you know, because y'all know I like to go to the store, walk, places and stuff like that because I'm not a homebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a homebody. So I like to go places, like the adventure places. So I pretty much said, fuck it. I'm going to another shelter, to a night shelter, so that way I can be gone during the day. I can do it if I want to. And the night shelter was worse. And uh, they had people in there fighting. You know, like some people was, were like selling tobacco in there, selling drugs in there. Uh, they had a little... Uh, hustle going on in there and then most of the people at that night shelter was rude so it was only a few people that were nice and trust me you guys I never in my life I'm 37 years old never in my life had to go through this at all never never ever ever uh, so I stayed in the shelter and then I walked the streets downtown and everything. I went to the library every day there. I went to Walmart. You know, I survived off of my food stamps because the shelter was not feeding nobody. Uh, they would, they was barely feeding people, you know. And they would not let me uh, freaking do my laundry, I had to do my laundry when I got hair, my laundry st stuck, and everything like that, um, and when I was, uh, going to go to the Greyhound, the, the, I went into the Greyhound, and they said that I had to buy a ticket just to go in there, just to, uh, sit inside so I went across the street at Checkers a gas station keep in mind I was trying to see if I could get some drink or some snack with my food stamp car but Checkers don't accept food stamps so uh, I was trying to walk to the other store Petro gas station and there was this guy this black guy was like uh Keep in mind, I had a white case. I had, I had this kind of case, you know. Just imagine walking around with this type of case, you know. A white case like this. They thought I was Magic Don Juan, you know what I'm saying? And I guess the the guy approached me and was like, uh, I know you got some money in there. I was like, no, I don't got no money, man. Leave me alone. He was like, well, I'm going to follow you. And, and then I ran back in the store at Checkers. And then the guy had a big old rat thing, you know. So I think I almost got robbed. And then uh, before that, my phone cracked three or four nights before I was going to leave on the Greyhound to go back to uh, Tennessee. My phone cracked. And what happened was I was downtown trying to catch another bus, you know, and my phone just like cracked on the uh, streets. And so I didn't have no phone. And plus my Chromebook was destroyed too and everything like that. So I couldn't contact my baby girl. I couldn't contact anybody. I couldn't do anything. 
so I had a communication at the library. You know, I had to use the library. And keep in mind, the library only lets you use like about two hours of library time, you know, a day. So I had to go back and forth to two different libraries just to keep in contact with my girlfriend. So my girlfriend got word and she couldn't get a hold of me. Uh, she couldn't get a hold of me a couple of nights ago. And she sent the police, the OKC police, uh, to the Greyhound. And the police rolled up on me and was like, uh, are you Baron? You know, that's my legal name. But most people on YouTube call me Byron. I go by Byron, you know, because that's my name on YouTube. Uh, and then I said, yeah. And, uh, and it's like, did you call the police? I was like, no. Cause at first I didn't know what was going on, nothing like that. You know, I thought somebody, uh, I thought it was acquaintances or something like that. Uh, so my girl couldn't buy the ticket until midnight, but keep in mind the, keep in mind the, uh, the, bus station closed by midnight and there was no way for her to give them the confirmation or give me the confirmation so I went on cross street to check her to call my girl up and then my girl was like really worried because she cares and everything and she told me that she called the police and, uh, and so I used that phone and so my girl decided to say, fuck it, come and get me. So she came and got me uh, pretty much yesterday uh, at 11. And then, you know, we rested it up until 7 o'clock uh, yesterday morning. Then I've been back here ever since the evening, you know, so... Uh, because keep in mind, I, I got my shoes stolen. I got myself, myself on accidentally busted up. I couldn't contact nobody. I almost got robbed. I almost got killed. And I could have lost my life if it would have for my girl. And also, Kim, my old mentor, she pretty much uh, put me in danger. You know, and my sister put me in danger too, because they put me out on the streets, and this would have never happened if they would have never did that. Because I didn't say nothing or do anything for them to kick me out or nothing. All I said is I want to go back to Tennessee, which I I told Kim that I wanted to go back to Tennessee. You know, at the beginning. So basically, you know, if it, if Kim would have never uh, put me in danger, all this stuff would never happen. My cell phone would never got broken. None of it. I would have been freaking. Uh, everything would went smoothly, and I would have had my phone and everything like that, and. Uh, and plus, I would have never got almost robbed. You know what I'm saying? I almost got robbed. I'm being serious at the checkers across the street from the Greyhound. I'm being really, really serious. Can some of y'all guys imagine being on the streets uh, for a couple of days or a day or so and then almost getting robbed or, or could have got beat up or something like that? Can y'all imagine that? Some of y'all probably would never think that that y'all would go through that. But it happens. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to the our enemies. And I would wish that on nobody, nobody. And this is my full story. This is my truth. And, 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 and if some of y'all was there when I was experiencing all this, some of y'all haters would really understand and wake up and stop hating because and some some haters say it's karma but no I didn't 
do anything to nobody. I didn't cause anything. I didn't contribute to anything. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to survive until I got back to Tennessee. That's all. There's no evidence of me doing anything that would indicate that why things happened the way it did. And so I was trying to trying to look for help for everybody. Nobody wanted to help uh, in Oklahoma. You know, a lot of these people are scumbags in Oklahoma. And they just wanted me to be in a shelter and suffer. And keep in mind, the shelters in Oklahoma City are kind of like low-level jails, you know. Just go, just stay in the shelter for a week in Oklahoma. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I went through hell, nothing but hell. You know what I'm saying? I almost got my life took it. And most people say all lives matter, right? If all lives matter, then my life mattered too. You know what I'm saying? I could have got my life took in. And y'all would have never seen me. Some of y'all would have been sad and some of y'all would have been celebrating. I know. You know what I'm saying? Because some of y'all wished the horrible things to happen to me. And, and, and see, a lot of, of y'all don't wish that on me. And that's what I like about y'all. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of y'all do due to your actions, the way that y'all treat me. You know what I'm saying? But I appreciate Elaine. I appreciate uh, uh, Georgia with Jewels. I appreciate my baby girl, Miss Passion. I appreciate everybody that prayed for me, everybody that, you know, cared about me. But for the dogs, for Kim, F.U. Kim, for my sister, Sabrina, F.U., you did me dirty, and I almost lost my life because of you, and I will never, never talk to you again and forgive you again. So I hope y'all enjoy this premiere. I had to make this a premiere simply because it's a long video. You know, it's a long, long, long video, so I don't want to just make it a regular video. You know, I want to make it a premiere. So, so yeah, uh, you know, uh, or I might just do make it a regular video, so so that way I don't know. But anyway, okay, bye bye.